Hey tennis players, you are watching Raj's tennis channel and today we're going to dive deep into this website called tennisrecord.com. Uh, if you are a USTA amateur um, competitive player, uh, that is you play in the USTA leagues competitively, you may have heard of this website. Um, it is quite popular because it displays this thing called a dynamic rating for every player. And so players find this useful to look up their own dynamic ratings as well as their opponent's dynamic ratings and see who's going up, who's going down, who's getting better, um, and so forth. So today we're going to dive into this dynamic rating and how it is actually calculated. So let's get to it. Um, I am looking at the match history of a player named Ajay Goyle, who happens to be my brother. And his dynamic rating is currently a 3.5921. I want to pick a specific match in particular to go into um, the details of all these numbers and how they're calculated. So let's look at this match that was played on January 13th, 2024. It's a singles match, and it was Ajay versus Nate Fullington. Now, to demonstrate some of this, I'm going to use this spreadsheet which I created. This spreadsheet is actually available to you as well. Um, if you look in the description of this video or in the comment section, you'll see a link to the spreadsheet. It's a Google Sheet. Uh, when you click on the link, it's going to take you to a read-only version of the spreadsheet, which quite frankly is not going to be super useful to you. So what you need to do is you need to first sign into your Google account if you're not already, and then click File, Make a Copy. Once you do that, it'll create a copy of this spreadsheet into your own Google Drive, and that copy will be fully, you'll have full access to it. So you can um, uh, plug in your own numbers and play around with it to your heart's content. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do this first, this match, this match at the top of my screen here as an example. So. The first thing the spreadsheet, so, so you need to fill in all of the yellow boxes in the spreadsheet in order to do the calculation. So the first three boxes are asking for Ajay's dynamic rating um, prior to this match. So before this match happened, before January 13th, Ajay's dynamic rating was a 3.49. So that's what we're going to put into this top box. Okay. Before he was a 3.49, he was a 3.53. So we're going to put that into the second box. And before he was a 3.53, he was a 3.47. So we're going to put the 3.47 into here. So your, mo your three most recent dynamic ratings um, prior to the match in question. Um, and then your opponent's dynamic rating prior to the match in question. So before... January 13th, Nate was a 3.65. So we put his rating into here. Okay, so now what actually happened during this match? Ajay won the match, okay, and this was the score, and we put the scores in right here. So 6 7 in the first set, and then 6 3 in the second set, and then a 1 0 in the third set. That third set was just a 10 point tie break, but it counts just like it counts as a game, just like uh, any other game in a set. It just counts as one game, even though it was played to ten points. There may have, you know, been you know they may have actually played twenty points. Who knows? Um, but it counts as a game, just like anything else. A normal set tiebreak also just counts as a game. So this first set ended in a set tiebreak. It was seven six. Um, but that tie break also just counts as a game, okay? Now, um, all the numbers in green are calculated automatically by the spreadsheet. So the first number is the what's called what we call the current rating gap between the two players. What that means is before the match began, how far apart were Ajay and Nate in terms of their ratings? Well, Ajay was a 3.49 before the match began. Nate was a 3.65. So that's a difference of 0.16. So Ajay was actually at a 0.16 um, disadvantage going into the match um, because he was rated this much lower than Nate. Okay? 
now this number here is the percentage of games that ajay won during this match and we can um, verify that by pulling out our calculator so uh ajay won 13 games total in the match and how many games were played 23 games were played right 6 plus 6 plus 1 plus 7 plus 3 is 23 and ajay won 13 of those so we take 13 divided by 23 multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent and we get 56.52 percent which is this number now ultimately when calculating dynamic ratings this is really all that matters in terms of the match outcome it doesn't matter actually that ajay won the match even though he did it that doesn't matter um, what matters is how many games were won by each player how many total games were won in the whole match by each player and then what that percentage comes out to be so in this case 56.52 percent okay the next number is the performance gap this is again calculated automatically for you and the way this the, what this number means is um, based on the score <clears throat> based on the fact that ajay won 56.52 percent how much better did ajay perform than nate in this match specifically and that comes out to be a 0 0.07 so ajay played this much better than nate in the match how did the spreadsheet get this number well it looked it up in a table so we go to this the third worksheet within the spreadsheet is the lookup table sheet so if you flip over to that tab and you look at this table here percent of total games one corresponding performance gap and you find 56.52 in the in the table you'll see that it translates to 0 0.07 so that's how it got this number Ajay played 0 0.07 better than Nate in the match. And then the next interesting number, we'll talk about the difference between raw and adjusted in the, uh, in the full version of this video. And that there's a link to the full version below as well. Um, that goes into much more detail. I'm not going to go into that, that level of detail in this one. Um, but if you're interested, go watch the full version. Um, the next interesting number then is it's called the it's called the performance rating of the the player in question so what this what the what tennis record and what the spreadsheet has has determined is that ajay played at a at a 3.72 level during this match and that's what's reflected in this number here on the on the website it's labeled under a column called match right so that's how well ajay did in this match he played at a 3.72 how did we get that number? Well, we previously determined that Ajay played better than Nate by 0 0.07. Nate's rating going into the match was a 3.65. So 3.65 plus 0 0.07 is 3.72. So that's how well Ajay performed in the match. And then finally, this last number is Ajay's new dynamic rating after this match after taking into account the results of this match this is his new dynamic rating and that's reflected right here uh, under a column called rating um, so it is new rating is 3.55 how did we get to that well all it is is it's at the average of his match performance and his three most recent dynamic ratings so the average of this and this and this and this and how do we take the average we just add them up and divide by the number of numbers so 3.72 plus 3.49 plus 3.53 plus 3.47 it's 14.21 divided by 4 3.5525 this is showing rounded to two decimal places so it's showing at 3.55 which is also again reflected right here and so that is how a just new dynamic rating is calculated and then that that same process happens for every match that he plays as he plays more and more matches um, the the it keeps calculating how well he performed in that match specifically and then his new dynamic rating based on that um, so anyway that's how it works um, 
Next, we're going to look at a doubles match. And we're going to switch over to my profile on tennisrecord.com. Okay, so let's look at this doubles match that I played um, on September 23rd. My partner was Nick Dalton, and our opponents were Josh Steck and Doug Coy. Um, so we're going to use, again, we're going to use the spreadsheet to um, do this simulation. Uh, again, it's going to ask for my three most recent dynamic ratings prior to the match in question. So in this case, I, I was at a 3.40 just prior to the match. And then before that, I was a 3.36. Now, why did I skip over all of these? Because the ones in red and the ones in green, the ones in red are mixed doubles matches and the ones in green are combo matches. So combo leagues. Um, and those do not count towards your normal dynamic rating. There's a separate dynamic rating calculated for those types of matches, and you can do the same exercise for those, but they're in different categories. So regular matches, mixed matches, and combo matches are all in different, considered different categories, and the ratings from one do not bleed into the ratings from the other. So if I'm to look at only the black um, numbers, those are my regular matches, and my uh, rating prior to the match in question was a 3.40. Before that, I was a 3.36, and before that, I was again a 3.36. So those were my three most recent dynamic ratings. Now, um, Nick Dalton's, this is my partner, partner's current dynamic rating, he was rated as a 2.69 going into the match. And then our two opponents, opponent one, opponent two, they were at a 3.16 and a 2.96 going into the match. Now, what happened during the match? Nick and I won, seven, five, and then six, four. Okay, so we put the scores in. And again, just like in singles, it calculates what percentage of the games were won by us. So in this case, um, we won 13 games out of a total of, looks like, 22 games. So times 100, 59.09%. Um, but there are some other fields in here that you didn't see in the singles match. So one, the first one is my team's current dynamic rating. So all that is, is the average of Nick and me. So Nick was a 2.69 going into the match. I was a 3.40 going into the match. The average of those two numbers is a 3.05. Our opponents were a 3.06 average together going into the match. So one guy was a 3.16, other guy was a 2.96. You average those two, you get a 3.06. And the gap between us, between... Um, us and them was a minus 0.02. Now I know it looks like it's a minus 0.01 based on these two numbers, but that's because they're being rounded. Um, and so you're not seeing all of the decimal places. If I were to crank up the decimal places a little bit, you would see that it's actually a 3045 and a 3060. And the difference between those is a minus 0.15. And it, because it's rounding this, it's showing it as a minus 0.02. But really, um, it's not a mistake. It's just a rounding error. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we won this percentage of the games. Go look up in the lookup table to see what the performance gap is when one team wins 59.09% of the games. That performance gap is a 0 0.09, meaning that Nick and I, as a team, played 0 0.09 better than the other team uh, because we won more games. Um, and you take that and then you add it to their team's uh, rating going into the match. They were 3.06 going in. We played 0.09 better than them. So that means we played at a 3.15 during this match. From there, what it does is it says, okay, well, okay, Nick and me, Nick and Rajiv played at a 3.15. So what does that make Rajiv's performance? during the match, and it put me at a 3.51. Why? 
because it kept the separation between Nick and I the same. It assumed that any improvement in the match, the credit for that goes equally to both Nick and I. So, um, so we, we came out to be an average of 3.15 during the match. So, and we started at a 3.05. So both of us improved by about, you know, 0 0.10 roughly. That's the difference between this and this. So Nick got better by 0 0.10. I got better by 0 0.10. So my performance in this match was a 3.51. And then my new dynamic rating is this. And this is, again, just calculated by the average of your performance during the match, 3.51, and my three most recent dynamic ratings, which were these. So you average those two, all those four numbers together, and you get a 3.41. And that's how that's calculated. For more detail on this, and if you really want to understand how it uh, works under the hood and the 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 uh, justification for doing it this way, um, you can watch the full version of my video, um, which is also linked below. And now that one has six parts to it, so it really goes into a lot of depth. So you'll need some time in order to get through that version of the video, but um, you're more than welcome to do that if you want. That's all I have for today. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, um, I would love it if you could subscribe to this channel and press like on the video. Uh, subscribing will give you notifications when I produce um, future videos, which I think if you found this interesting, you'll also find those interesting. So subscribe will help you um, stay in touch. And then feel free to, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. All right, guys and gals, have a great day. Uh, see you on the courts.